world is in a dangerous spot. Of late, I have seen many articles postulating what moves gold up or down. We have heard all the old reasons being put forth from GDP, to a hedge against market volatility to interest rates, to the US dollar, and many more. Unfortunately, market history simply does not support these reasons as a consistent driver of gold, as I have detailed in many past articles, in fact, a recent article on gold suggested that, W, we all know that gold is negatively correlated to GDP growth. Well, since gold rose between 2000 to 2008, and as you can see from this attached chart that real GDP did as well, are we really sure that we all know that gold is negatively correlated to GDP growth? In fact, take note that the stock market also rose strongly during this same period of time. Moreover, I have seen many other charts presented which offer no evidence that there is any real relationship between gold and GDP. I have discussed this many times in the past. Correlations cannot be wholly relied upon unless you understand when those seeming correlations will end. And, since most correlation analysis does not present any indication of when those correlations will end, they are no better than using a ruler to determine your projections for any chart. Such linear analysis will be of no use in determining when a change of trend may occur. And, one does not need such analysis to assume the current trend for anything will continue. In fact, this is likely why so many intramarket analysts have done so poorly in the last five years as they fail to see the coming breakdown in the correlations they follow even though we were warning about these impending breakdowns back in 2015. For those following us for the last six years, you would remember that we were not only accurate in our assessment for a top being struck in the metals complex in 2011, but we were also accurate in our assessment for a bottom being struck at the end of 2015. Since that time, the market has provided us with what looks like a very nice five-wave structure off the 2015 low, followed by a corrective pullback. Now, when I see a larger degree five-wave structure, wave one, being made off a multi-year bottom, followed by a corrective pullback, wave two, I am on alert for the heart of a third wave to take hold. And, in the metals complex, those are quite breathtaking rallies. For this reason, I have erred on the bullish side of the market as the market was looking like it was setting up for that third wave in 2017. However, rather than providing us the third wave rally for which I was seeking confirmation, 2017 has been exceptionally frustrating as the market has invalidated several setups for that major third wave breakout. Yet, when presented with the same opportunities on any chart, I would have probably reacted in the exact same fashion. Most of the time, the market will follow through on such setups, while in a minority of circumstances we would see the market continue on a much larger degree second wave pullback. Clearly, the market has decided that 2017 was going to be a year of consolidation. Even though we have not had the third wave breakout, we have not yet broken any of the lows we identified throughout the year. And, for those that have heeded my warnings about not using leverage until the market proved itself to be within its third wave, you could have still made money on each of these rallies. In fact, the GDX is approximately 10% over the lows we identified this year, even though it may not feel that way due to the frustration we have all felt with this current consolidation. However, as I have been warning for the last few weeks, the GDX may be signaling it could break below those pullback lows we have struck this year. But, much depends on how high the rally I am expecting in the complex takes us. If the GDX is able to make a higher high in the 26 region in the coming weeks, then it leaves the door open that green wave, too, may not break below the July lows. However, if the market is unable to develop a higher high over that struck in September, and then breaks below the low made before the current rally began, it opens the door to the GTX dropping down towards the 17 region before year end, to complete a much more protracted wave 2, as presented in yellow on the daily GTX chart. My preference still remains at GTX, silver and GLT all make a higher high in the coming weeks, which would put a more bullish stance upon the complex, even though another drop will likely take us into the end of the years. I really have nothing to which I can point that would suggest this will occur within a high degree of probability.
So, I have turned extremely cautious of the complex, at least until it proves itself with a higher high being struck in the coming weeks. Until such time, I am going to be more protective of my positions. And for those who are still viewing this market from an extremely bullish perspective, I will be honest with you and tell you that I do not see any high probability setup which would suggest the market is going to imminently break out in the heart of a third wave just yet. For this reason, I think that one can maintain a certain amount of patience as if 2017 has not forced you to be patient enough, as even if we see a rally to a higher high, it will likely be followed by another pullback as a wave 2 in GDX and a C wave in GLD and silver before we are finally ready to break out over the 2016 market highs. Ultimately, this leads me to the conclusion that the 2016 market highs will not likely be broken until 2018, and this will remain as my primary expectation whether the GDX sees a larger breakdown or not. But, until we see how the next rally takes shape, we will not be able to ascertain with more certainty whether a bigger decline is in the cards until the end of the year, or if we will simply remain in the same consolidation region until then. But, caution for the next few months is clearly warranted. Gold, higher highs and lower lows. Gold could be in a long-term trend right now that spells dramatically higher prices in the years ahead. To understand why, let's first look at the long decline in gold prices from 2011 to 2015. The best explanation I have heard came from legendary commodities investor Jim Rogers. He personally believes that gold will end up in the $10,000 per ounce range, which I have also predicted. But Rogers makes the point that no commodity ever goes from a secular bottom to top without a 50% retracement along the way. Gold bottomed at $255 per ounce in August 1999. From there, it turned decisively higher and rose 650% until it peaked near $1,900 in September 2011. So gold rose $1,643 per ounce from August 1999 to September 2011. A 50% retracement of that rally would take $821 per ounce off the price, putting gold at $1,077 when the retracement finished. That's almost exactly where gold ended up on November 27, 2015, $1,058 per ounce. This means the 50% retracement is behind us and gold is set for new all-time highs in the years ahead. Why should investors believe gold won't just get slammed again? The answer is that there is an important distinction between the 2011-15 to 15 price action and what's going on now. The four-year decline exhibited a pattern called lower highs and lower lows. While gold rallied and fell back, each peak was lower than the one before and each valley was lower than the one before also. Since December 2016, it appears that this bear market pattern has reversed. We now see higher highs and higher lows as part of an overall uptrend. The February 24, 2017 High of $1,256 per ounce was higher than the prior January 23, 2017, high of $1,217 per ounce. The May 10 flow of $1,218 per ounce was higher than the prior March 14 flow of $1,198 per ounce. The September 7 high of $1,353 was higher than the June 6 high of $1,296. And the October 5th low of $1,271 was higher than the July 7th low of $1,212. Of course, this new trend is less than a year old and is not deterministic. Still, it is an encouraging sign when considered alongside other bullish factors for gold. Where does the gold market go from here? We're seeing a persistent excess of demand over new supply. China and Russia alone are buying more than 100% of annual output each year. Private holders are keeping their gold as well. On a recent visit to Switzerland, I was informed that secure logistics operators could not build new vaults fast enough and were taking over nuclear bomb-proof mountain bunkers from the Swiss Army to handle the demand for private storage. With gold sellers disappearing and large demand continuing, the price will have to go up to clear markets. Geopolitics is another powerful factor.
The crisis in North Korea is not getting any better. It's actually getting worse. Syria, Iran and the South China Sea are additional flashpoints. The headlines may fade in any given week, but geopolitical shocks will return when least expected and send gold soaring in the flight to safety. Finally, the Fed will not raise rates in December, contrary to market expectations. Eventually, the markets will figure this out. Right now, markets are giving about an 86% chance of a rate hike in December based on Kami Fed Funds futures. That rate will drop significantly by DEC.13 when the FUNC meets again with the press conference. As market probabilities catch up with reality, the dollar will sink and gold will rally. In short, all signs point to higher gold prices in the months ahead. I look for a powerful surge toward $1,400 by the end of this year based on Fed ease, geopolitical tensions and a weaker dollar. The gold rally that began on December 15, 2016, looks like one that will finally break the bear pattern of lower highs and lower lows and turn it into the bullish pattern of higher highs and higher lows. Important distinction between 2011 to 2015 versus the gold price now. Rickards says there's a new trend in place that will carry gold higher, and it's an important distinction over the 2011 to 2015 bear market years. Gold could be in a long-term trend right now that spells dramatically higher prices in the years ahead. To understand why, let's first look at the long decline in gold prices from 2011 to 2015. The best explanation I've heard came from legendary commodities investor Jim Rogers. He personally believes that gold will end up in the $10,000 per ounce range, which I have also predicted. But Rogers makes the point that no commodity ever goes from a secular bottom to top without a 50% retracement along the way. Gold bottomed at $255 per ounce in August 1999. From there, it turned decisively higher and rose 650% until a peak near $1,900 in September 2011. So gold rose $1,643 per ounce from August 1999 to September 2011. A 50% retracement of that rally would take $821 per ounce off the price, putting gold at $1,077 when the retracement finished. That's almost exactly where gold ended up on November 27, 2015, $1,058 per ounce. This means the 50% retracement is behind us and gold is set for new all-time highs in the years ahead. Why should investors believe gold won't just get slammed again? The answer is that there is an important distinction between the 2011 to 15 price action and what's going on now. The four-year decline exhibited a pattern called lower highs and lower lows. While gold rallied and fell back, each peak was lower than the one before and each valley was lower than the one before also. Since December 2016, it appears that this bear market pattern has reversed. We now see higher highs and higher lows as part of an overall uptrend. The February 24, 2017 High of $1,256 per ounce was higher than the prior January 23, 2017, high of $1,217 per ounce. The May 10 flow of $1,218 per ounce was higher than the prior March 14 flow of $1,198 per ounce. The September 7 high of $1,353 was higher than the June 6 high of $1,296. And the October 5th low of $1,271 was higher than the July 7th low of $1,212. Of course, this new trend is less than a year old and is not deterministic. Still, it is an encouraging sign when considered alongside other bullish factors for gold. Where does the gold market go from here? We're seeing a persistent excess of demand over new supply. China and Russia alone are buying more than 100% of annual output each year. Private holders are keeping their gold as well. On a recent visit to Switzerland, I was informed that secure logistics operators could not build new vaults fast enough and were taking over nuclear bomb-proof mountain bunkers from the Swiss Army to handle the demand for private storage. With gold sellers disappearing and large demand continuing, the price will have to go up to clear markets. 
Geopolitics is another powerful factor. The crisis in North Korea is not getting any better. It's actually getting worse. Syria, Iran and the South China Sea are additional flashpoints. The headlines may fade in any given week, but geopolitical shocks will return when least expected and send gold soaring in the flight to safety. Finally, the Fed will not raise rates in December, contrary to market expectations. Eventually, the markets will figure this out. Right now, markets are giving about an 86% chance of a rate hike in December based on Kami Fed Funds futures. That rate will drop significantly by DEC.13 when the FUMC meets again with the press conference. As market probabilities catch up with reality, the dollar will sink and gold will rally. In short, all signs point to higher gold prices in the months ahead. I look for a powerful surge toward $1,400 by the end of this year based on Fed ease, geopolitical tensions and a weaker dollar. The gold rally that began on December 15, 2016, looks like one that will finally break the bear pattern of lower highs and lower lows and turn it into the bullish pattern of higher highs and higher lows. The gold price forecast 2018 might surprise you. Expect gold price to reach $1,350 to $1,400 an ounce in 2018. The gold price forecast for 2018 cannot but be bullish. It would be reasonable to expect gold prices in 2018 to range in an area between $1,350 and $1,400 per ounce. The gold price predictions for 2018 vary. But, if you avoid the necessary departures of logic, the level of uncertainty is such that gold prices in 2018 could be even higher than $1,400 per ounce. Gold cannot but increase its appeal in the face of the high uncertainty caused by Brexit. It's far from over and Theresa May's government, even after an election, remains on the edge of the cliff. The UK will likely endure another election. It could take place next fall, before the end of the year. Meanwhile, the migration crisis in the Mediterranean has pitted Italy, one of the European Union's founding members, against the rest. The unregistered illegal migrants arrive by the thousands every single day. What does this have to do with gold price trends? Quite a bit, it turns out. Rescue ships from the national navies or coast guards of various nations complemented by the efforts of decoders from NGOs pick up the migrants near the Libyan coast now. This encourages the phenomenon. But the ships promptly deposit the migrants very few would actually qualify as political refugees at Italian ports. The situation is putting pressure on citizens and politicians. It will no doubt force the calling of a general election in 2017 or 2018. The parties that have criticized the illegal migration problem could score a major win. But, it so happens that such parties are the same that advocate Italy quit the EU if the rest of its members refuse to take in migrants and share the problem. Meanwhile, in the United States we have CNN pursuing a political witch hunt against Russia and anyone, it seems in Washington that may or may not have entertained cordial relations, business, or political exchanges with Russian citizens. The media is putting pressure on President Donald Trump to deviate from his plans to establish a closer relationship with Russia lest anyone forget, a major nuclear power. One of the potential victims of the media's and much of Congress's anti-Russian efforts is to weaken the tacit agreement for the U.S. or NATO to interfere in Syria's political arrangements. Trump has conceded that Russia has a vital interest in maintaining asset and power in Damascus. President Macron of France also agrees. But, CNN does not, and neither do many influential but intrusive members of Congress, from Senator McCain to Chuck Schumer. This messy political soup is just starting to simmer now. It could reach a boil by New Year's Eve 2017. This is bad for politics, but good for the gold price outlook. If 2017 has been eventful, 2018 promises to be even more so. The financial world has experienced almost 10 years of a bull market. As a result there are analysts, bankers, and investors who have known nothing but gains and nothing but near zero interest rates. The trend has taken such root that it has prevented the Federal Reserve from upholding let alone championing, 
It's much publicized plans to raise the nominal interest rate. The Fed has made three consecutive interest rate hikes since late 2015. That has pushed them to 1%. But Chair Janet Yellen seemed uncertain herself that raising rates might be the best policy. The fact that Yellen made it rather clear that the economy is too weak to absorb another rate hike should have sent markets tumbling. Instead, investors, in zombie mode and apparently not willing to believe in anything but the bull market, rushed to buy more. What should have been a sell-off became a shopping spree on Wall Street. In turn, the dollar has suffered, losing ground to major currencies. But, not surprisingly, gold, which attracts a more conservative type of investor the kind that has seen it all started to move up. At the time of writing, the gold price per ounce was trading at about $1,245. It has managed to gain some $30 in a matter of three or four trading days. There is uncertainty in the air, and the gold price, as usual, reflects this. Everything points to gold prices increasing regardless of the Fed. Gold has actually pulled off a remarkable recovery. Despite reduced price pressure, given the bullish stock market, gold tends to go up when stocks are down and what might even be a negative environment, gold is moving higher. It's true that the Fed's capping of the interest rate hike program has contributed to accelerating gold's recovery. But, the medium and long-term financial stock market crash, economic major recession, and geopolitical conflicts with Russia, China, North Korea, Iran risks are such that the long-term gold price forecast is bullish. As a safe haven and value deposit, gold should continue to appreciate during the second half of 2017 in the range of $1,250 minus $1,300. But that's a conservative estimate. There's potential for prices to hit $1,400 or even $1,450 after the summer. If Europe doesn't solve the migration crisis by then, there's the risk of a massive revolt in Italy. That could shake up the very foundations of the European Union, given that Italy is one of the original members of the European political and economic project. That said, even if Italy manages to secure more cooperation from its neighbors and from Brussels, Migrants are going to influence even indirectly politics in other EU states. The patterns suggest a higher than expected gold price in 2018. Meanwhile, there are already patterns developing that should sustain gold prices in 2017 and 2018. The US dollar has shown itself rather weak lately. The weakness of the US currency has helped boost the precious metal over the past week in the international market. Standard Chartered Bank has updated its gold price forecast and improved its forecast from $1,200 to $1,300 an ounce for the fourth quarter of 2017. It seems hard to believe. Considering that the gold price per ounce has not traded higher than $1,300 since 2016, few would expect it to reach $1,350, let alone higher, by 2018. According to the report by Standard Chartered, there is a greater chance that the gold price will close the year at $1,300 per ounce rather than $1,200. The gold price is more likely to exceed $1,300 an ounce to take a bearish trend. The fact that the Standard Chartered report was published before the Fed made it clear it would be much more cautious about raising interest rates only makes the $1,300 per ounce mark more credible. There are of course, other factors affecting gold prices. These range from production shortfalls to yields on U.S. Treasury bonds and taxes on goods and services. For example, Indian authorities have considered enforcing such a tax. But while such a tax applied to gold in India could pose a problem, since its application in June, it has not. Indeed, is going to be more of a temporary obstacle than a structural impact on demand. Among the factors that may lead to a fall in gold prices is the reduction of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. Then there are also other potential obstacles including the slowdown in inflation, the reduction in demand in India, beyond administrative risks. 
Should such factors start to have an effect which should keep gold prices at around $1,200 per ounce they are no match for the tremendous political risks in 2017, which could overflow into 2018. Moreover, even if Janet Yellen changes her mind, the U.S. Federal Reserve rate hikes have shown they are ineffective. They are no longer crucial to establishing significant declines or upswings in gold prices. Yes. Gold did pick up after the Fed assured the markets it would be more cautious about hikes. But, even when investors expected interest rate increases, the gold price outlook remained above $1,200 per ounce. Thus the price floor for gold has gotten higher. The Federal Reserve is expected to hold its third rate hike debate before the end of 2017. But, by then, there may have already been a major stock market crash or a major market correction. The signs of weakness, despite the Dow Jones reaching for new records are strong. Trump continues to face pressure. The president cannot push through his economic agenda of lower taxes. Frankly, there's little the president can do while his legitimacy continues to be questioned. The degree 5 wave structure wave 1 being made off a multi-year bottom followed by a corrective pullback. Wave 2, I am on alert for the heart of a third wave to take hold. And, in the metals complex, those are quite breathtaking rallies. For this reason, I have erred on the bullish side of the market as the market was looking like it was setting up for that third wave in 2017. However, rather than providing us the third wave rally for which I was seeking confirmation, 2017 has been exceptionally frustrating as the market has invalidated several setups for that major third wave breakout. Yet, when presented with the same opportunities on any chart, I would have probably reacted in the exact same fashion. Most of the time, the market will follow through on such setups, while in a minority of circumstances we would see the market continue on a much larger degree second wave pullback. Clearly, the market has decided that 2017 was going to be a year of consolidation. Even though we have not had the third wave breakout, we have not yet broken any of the lows we identified throughout the year. And, for those that have heeded my warnings about not using leverage until the market proved itself to be within its third wave, you could have still made money on each of these rallies. In fact, the GDX is approximately 10% over the lows we identified this year even though it may not feel that way due to the frustration we have all felt with this current consolidation. However, as I have been warning for the last few weeks, the GDX may be signaling it could break below those pullback lows we have struck this year. But, much depends on how high the rally I am expecting in the complex takes us. If the GDX is able to make a higher high in the 26 region in the coming weeks, then it leaves the door open that green wave, too, may not break below the July lows. However, if the market is unable to develop a higher high over that struck in September, and then breaks below the low made before the current rally began, it opens the door to the GTX dropping down towards the 17 region before year end, to complete a much more protracted wave too, as presented in yellow on the daily GTX chart. My preference still remains at GTX. Silver and GLT all make a higher high in the coming weeks, which would put a more bullish stance upon the complex. Even though another drop will likely take us into the end of the years, I really have nothing to which I can point that would suggest this will occur within a high degree of probability. So, I have turned extremely cautious of the complex, at least until it proves itself with the higher high being struck in the coming weeks. Until such time, I am going to be more protective of my positions. And for those who are still viewing this market from an extremely bullish perspective, I will be honest with you and tell you that I do not see any high probability setup which would suggest the market is going to imminently break out in the heart of a third wave just yet. For this reason, I think that one can maintain a certain amount of patience as if 2017 has not forced you to be patient enough, as even if we see a rally to a higher high, it will likely be followed by another pullback as a wave 2 in GDX and a C wave in GLD and silver before we are finally ready to break out over the 2016 market highs. Ultimately, this leads me to the conclusion that the 2016 market highs will not likely be broken until 2018, 
and this will remain as my primary expectation whether the GDX sees a larger breakdown or not. But, until we see how the next rally takes shape, we will not be able to ascertain with more certainty whether a bigger decline is in the cards until the end of the year, or if we will simply remain in the same consolidation region until then. But, caution for the next few months is clearly warranted. Gold, higher highs and lower lows. Gold. Gold is in a dangerous spot. Of late, I have seen many articles postulating what moves gold up or down. We have heard all the old reasons being put forth from GDP, to a hedge against market volatility to interest rates, to the US dollar, and many more. Unfortunately, market history simply does not support these reasons as a consistent driver of gold, as I have detailed in many past articles, in fact. A recent article on gold suggested that, W, we all know that gold is negatively correlated to GDP growth. Well, since gold rose between 2000 to 2008, and as you can see from this attached chart that real GDP did as well, are we really sure that we all know that gold is negatively correlated to GDP growth? In fact, take note that the stock market also rose strongly during this same period of time. Moreover. I have seen many other charts presented which offer no evidence that there is any real relationship between gold and GDP. I have discussed this many times in the past. Correlations cannot be wholly relied upon unless you understand when those seeming correlations will end. And, since most correlation analysis does not present any indication of when those correlations will end, they are no better than using a ruler to determine your projections for any chart. Such linear analysis will be of no use in determining when a change of trend may occur. And, one does not need such analysis to assume the current trend for anything will continue. In fact, this is likely why so many intermarket analysts have done so poorly in the last five years as they fail to see the coming breakdown in the correlations they follow even though we were warning about these impending breakdowns back in 2015. For those following us for the last six years, you would remember that we were not only accurate in our assessment for a top being struck in the metals complex in 2011, but we were also accurate in our assessment for a bottom being struck at the end of 2015. Since that time, the market has provided us with what looks like a very nice five-wave structure off the 2015 low, followed by a corrective pullback. Now, when I see a large